other than Russia's blockade of Ukraine and Russia's refusal, in many cases, to export its own grain for political reasons. Uh, no reason that this shouldn't be moving. Let's talk more about uh, this gathering in uh, Berlin this Friday. Karina Hawkes is a professor of uh, food policy at City University of uh, London. Uh, Karina, thanks very much for speaking to us here at France 24. Uh, you will have heard then Anthony Blinking, uh, the US top diplomat, saying uh, that there should, shouldn't be uh, any reason why food isn't moving. It clearly isn't, though. I mean, walk us through, if you will, the aim of this conference today. Good evening. Uh, the aim of this conference is around addressing the hum humanitarian catastrophe which is unfolding, uh, with 1.2 billion people threatened by hunger and the crisis that is, is coming a about from the economic and food price crisis, the energy crisis. But at the same time, the conference is also concerned with the long-term sustainability of food system. And it's concerned with trying to find the right policy solutions to address these, both the short-term issues and the long-term issues. I mean, can we talk about a food uh, crisis at the moment? I mean, would you, can we equally talk about the weaponising of food at this stage? I mean, your thoughts on that, Karina? Yes, food is being weaponised. That's, that's been done for, for, for decades, um, all throughout time. Food has been used as a weapon of war, and we see that today with the blockaging of the uh, ports. Because what, the, 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 what that does, it creates a very difficult geopolitical situation between countries. But what it also does is to increase food prices. And when food prices rise, uh, populations start to get pretty unhappy about it. And there's very clear evidence that when food prices go up above a certain level, people take to the streets. They start to riot. Um, more conflict is created. And, of course, that's very bad for political leaders. So by these blockages, by the use of food as a weapon of war, uh, there is an intention to, uh, to create instability across the world. I mean, we've spoken about it this evening. The Black Sea is obviously uh, pretty complicated at the moment. You have Russian warships there that are kind of blocking, uh, you know, food leaving. There are equally Ukrainian mines there, and Russia has called for, uh, you know, demining to, to, to take place. I mean, what are the options at this stage? Is it about road use uh, in, in Europe? I mean, it, it seems like one of the few options at the moment. What do you think about that? Well, unfortunately, there's been a failure to invest in infrastructure which is one of the reasons why this crisis is happening. And that's a longer-term issue, and we need to get going on those longer-term investments in infrastructure to prevent this from happening again. There's other longer-term issues about the lack of diversification in the food supply globally, which means that we are overly dependent on these particular sources of food. So there's an important medium to long-term agenda that we have to start now. In the meantime, it's a question of political negotiation, a question of, of trying to use the routes that are possible. It's ducking and diving to try and make it happen, and that's going to take skilled political negotiation. And um, and uh, engaging with the right people in the right partnerships. I mean, you use the word dependency there, Karina, and I think, you know, for those who are not experts in, you know, the field of gas or the field of food policy as you are, they are surprised to see how dependent uh, the global food market is on certain countries. I mean, how do you get around that when it's been going on, as you say, for, for so many years now? Well, the first thing to do is, is to start to, to, to reinvest in domestic food supplies. Uh, we need to have global trade. It's always going to be an important part of the food that we, that, that, that we eat. But there's been a, a lack of investment in domestic uh, food, uh, food systems and food supplies. So that's a, a crucial change that needs to happen. And that there's also been an overemphasis on cheap food is better food. And the reality is that creates is that there's so much competition to produce food more cheaply uh, that you end up not investing. You end up um, uh, uh, um, using competitive advantage to specialise. You have fewer people producing food. So you actually really need to change the whole way that you're structuring the food system to take the pressure off. And, uh, and so food doesn't have to be quite so cheap. Margins don't have to be so low. So you can actually create a situation where you can invest in a more diverse food supply. All right, Karina Hawkes, Professor of Food Policy at City University. Thanks for your time this evening. Thank you very much.